Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Zoom Into Wine. It's time for the show and your host, Ian Blackburn. All right, this evening we're going to be tasting some of my top value selections of the moment. And I want to welcome you guys and thank you for joining us. Love having a, a fun audience who wants to learn about wine and taste some great things. We do this blind. I send everybody five bottles of wine to be able to taste and to explore. And uh, Alyssa, looks like you guys are doing it right. You've got the whole crew there. Thank you very much. Uh, how are you, Lisa Tess? Good to see you. Good. I used the Coravan for the first time. All right. One of them is a, a screw cap. Did you do you have a screw cap enclosure on that one? Not yet. That one I had to open up. All right. Door. Well, the screw cap thing works really well, and I, I highly recommend the core event. As you know, it's a great way to participate in all of our events. Uh, we do offer a lot of value in the bottle selection, um, but we also send out tasting kits, and some of you may have those tonight. Uh, where we send out two ounces of the wine, so you have no idea what, what each bottle is. And if you have the bottles at home, I do ask you to uh, keep those quiet and, and away from anybody, and don't open them until we taste them. But let's get started. Welcome, everybody. All right, so we're gonna taste five different wines. And in fact, what I've got for you, I forgot, is I'm going to put in the chat box what the five wines are, okay? Now, these are not in the order, of course, but I give you a, a numeric way of uh, uh, listing them. They're A, B, C, D, E. So when we guess, you can guess which one's A, which one's B, which one's C, which one's D. I'm going to try to go into uh, see our friends on Facebook and see if we can't give them that same opportunity. But uh, here we go, Facebookers. All right, so we've got the, the five wines, you know what they are. Now let's talk about them so that we can maybe taste through these wines and identify them one at a time. And I've got this slideshow ready for us here. All right. So one of the wines, we'll call it Wine A. A um, little hard to say, so it, uh, phonetically it's Planiol or Masgran Planiol. Um, this is from Casters de Nimes. It is uh, a really beautiful wine. I'll show you the page uh, of the wine bottle so you can see a picture of the bottle. Um, this is what it looks like. Uh, this is a really important wine from a guy named Cyril Mars. Uh, he is uh, a very famous winemaker in the Castres de Nimes region. Let me show you where that is. We're talking about the Rhone Valley, which is of course famous for regions like Chateau Neuf de Pop, just outside of Avignon. Um, but we're down here in, in uh, Nimes and Castel de Nimes is uh, the name of this place here. And uh, here's our winemaker. This is a, a wine that is 60% Grenache, 35 Syrah, and five Cinso. And really is uh, uh, one of the top finds of the year. It is uh, just a delicious bottle of wine. And as you may have noticed on the page about uh, the price point, we're talking about a bottle of wine that's selling here for about $14. And I, I just can't find anything to compete with it on the website. So maybe some of you will agree with me tonight. It is an outstanding value. And I would pay quite a bit more and be very satisfied with this bottle. But why pay more if you don't have to? So let's take a look at the other possibilities tonight. Now, this being from the Rhone, 
and it being Grenache, Syrah, and so very Chateauneuf de Pop like, but obviously at this price point it doesn't have quite the same power. But what we do get is nice richness. Um, you're going to get smells of these varieties, which tend to lean into black pepper, uh, red fruits. Uh, you're going to have a nice balance of earth and spice. Um, and, you know, it's kind of anything that's in the Rhone category kind of has that spiciness, might have a little bit of a, a, a tomato leaf kind of a character, which is very Grenache. It might have just a little bit of a gamey sensation or um, uh, a little bit of power from that Syrah that can kind of come off like maybe uh, uh, like a, a nice uh, piece of charcuterie or dried ham. Um, <clears throat> And then since so, to give it a, a nice little kiss of, of playfulness and floral element. Um, so a really beautiful wine. I hope you guys enjoy it. And we'll see if you can figure out which one it is. A couple of pictures just of our, our region, very near the Rhone River, a very big and powerful river that really feeds a good portion of south of France with a, a major port in Avignon. Of course, the Pope moved there. And, you know, named the new area, the Chateau Nifta Pop, the new Chateau of the Pope. So that's one of our wines tonight. Another wine, wine B we'll call it, is from a brand called Chateau Maris. And this is a Minervois, which is from the Languedoc. And we'll talk about that in a minute. Let me show you what that bottle looks like. Here's the Maris bottle. Minervois is in the Languedoc Roussillon. I'll show you that in a moment. But this guy, um, he, Robert Eden, is uh, there. The, Robert Parker says there's people that are organic and they're sustainable. And then there's Chateau Maris. This is uh, uh, thought to be France's most sustainable uh, property and really seeks to play into that biodynamic element. Not everything they do is 100% biodynamic. Biodynamics is, uh, uh, works really well as a way to keep your property in good order, but uh, they don't want to necessarily have to pay uh, the organization to be uh, a certified biodynamic. Uh, so they, but they do follow all of the organic standards. They really kind of set the standard. I mean, nobody can be more in line with all of the rules but they, they belong to so many different organizations. And the one that's a very expensive one to belong to is that biodynamic group. So um, all, the, all the right things happen here. Uh, this is a bottle of wine that's around $17. And the composition is about 80% Syrah and 20 Grenache. So let's go back into our, our PowerPoint and just look at where this wine comes from. A uh, beautiful estate. They make quite a few different Rhone type of wines. Now the Rhone category, not from the Rhone, but uh, they are um, a beautiful estate that grows in a place called Minervois. Let me show you where that is. We're right in here and along the coast. Of course, up here you've got the Rhone over here, and then you've got uh, uh, the regions that grow uh, Syrah along the, or uh, grow uh, rosé over he here um, <clears throat> and there's just a lot of really interesting little wines uh, sparkling wines from Lemieux, uh, a reef salt from along the coast uh, you've got Banyuls over here you've got uh, Côte de Roussillon here and so all these little kind of country wines they're really beautiful very interesting a little more uh, rustic, kind of farmer-driven wines, smaller producers, a lot of value coming from the Languedoc Roussillon. And here's a, a, a really beautiful photo from the estate to show you uh, how its proximity is. Old vines grown in really, uh, uh, these soils are just ancient soils. And there is a lot of saltiness in the air. So we may get a little kiss of that Mediterranean sunshine, a uh, little kiss of that Mediterranean salt air, um, and a little bit more uh, Syrah dominated wine. Could be a little darker, let's say, at its, since there are similar price points. 
Um, could be darker. I'm not gonna. I, I, I'm gonna taste them with you at the same time. Hopefully, you have five glasses and you can put them all side by side and really do this right. Right. I think it's the best way to go. But if you're gonna do it one glass at a time, um, you have to have a good memory. All right. So we'll move into glass or uh, wine. Uh, we'll call it wine C. It's not uh, number three or anything like that because you have number three. I don't know what that is yet. But uh, what is wine C about? And C is uh, a Malbec from a brand called Monte Viejo. Um, they make this wine and the wine is called Petite Fleur. Here's a picture of it. Um, I actually visited this estate which was planted by a famous vineyard, vigneron named uh, Michel Roland. And it's a 2,500 acre estate that multiple owners, it's called Clos de la Siete. I only believe five producers are making wine uh, on the property, but it's owned by, is that seven, Siete uh, producers. And uh, it's a huge estate. They make a bunch of wine under the de los Andes label as a cooperative wine and then each of the producers have their own blocks that they farm and they can make their own wine from and some of them will make more uh, uh, prolific more uh, aggressive more uh, established wines in the future these vines are still maturing it's been about 15 years some of them are going to wait until these vineyards are 30 years of age before they really start to put their own name on them and make the type of wines that they're hoping to make um, uh, the idea also is to make more expensive wines to pay for this property and to make it a good investment it's really hard when you're trying to make a commodity 15 dollars bottle of wine it doesn't work, usually work out very well so this wine was originally slotted to get about 40 bucks a bottle and and initially the all the estates were hoping to hit that that price point but in america people really want to spend ten dollars a bottle on a bottle of wine and if you get to twenty dollars a bottle for a malbec you're you're tasting something pretty exceptional um, when this wine was slighted for 35 it didn't do so well and so many of the producers pulled back their expectations gave more juice to the cooperative wine let the cooperative kind of pay down the bills. Don't go and invest a bunch in the markets that aren't ready for a $40 bottle of wine yet. It's a little bit of a time build here. So we get an extreme value. This wine was originally slotted for $35. We're at $19 now. So a Malbec with some age on it too. Um, this wine is from the 2012 vintage, which was very good. And I believe it got some decent press too. James Suckling, very fine and polished red with lovely tannins and subtle cherry, chocolate, and hazelnut character. Um, these wines tend to be black and dark and bold, so I think that's going to stand out in the glass a little bit. But it also has a little bit of age, so it's going to show that age a little bit. And maybe you can tell uh, looking into the glass which one is which. I look forward to hearing that. And we'll go back to the PowerPoint and I'll just show you a couple more slides from this beautiful brand. We are in Mendoza and uh, we're in the Valle de Uco. And uh, this is a, um, a, a very important, you know, there's many different sections inside of Mendoza. Valle de Uco, a little higher elevation, a little better quality, um, really a nice slope. And all those things played perfectly into the hands of this French mentality. So that's what they, they did. Now, each of these properties, um, so they could build a sizable estate looking property like that for, you know, if you were going to do something like that in Bordeaux, it might cost you $50 million. But you could probably do that in Argentina for $10 million. So they that's the whole idea is that they have... You know succession plans and all that stuff with their families and so they the investment and value proposition is very strong for these long pictured you know the big big uh, long life uh, family plan of the Bordelais the vines are all uh, worked on by this team and the team works the entire estate and then each family 
has different protocols that they follow and their on their on best vines and some of those are still being determined because much of the wine is being used for the cooperative wine but uh, they definitely use their best fruit for their best wines and they got this beautiful wine facility all state of the art of course they're brand new uh, maybe 10 years old now because this story's been in motion for a while but 10 year old winery is still kind of a brand new winery wine d tonight uh, this is our longue nebbiolo from miraflore uh, really uh, a, another top value of course all these wines hit that mark um, I drank a bottle of this last night, and uh, it was just a just a rock star little bottle. 2013 is the current vintage, probably moving into the 14 now from this house. They take their time releasing their wines. Um, the this is uh, just always a, a really good value. They're very natural path about their wine, not in a rush, old school type of productions, and. Um, I'm, I'm always a big fan of this wine when you can get it. Um, it's uh, often I've poured in top restaurants by the glass. Uh, I think I had it um, last at a restaurant called Moza in Los Angeles. Um, here's a, here's a, a nice little hillside to show you how that steep slope that the, the Nebbiolo grows on in the town of Longue, right outside of Barolo. And uh, if you've ever been there before, it's very close to the French border, upper north corner, uh, northwest corner of Italy. Um, and this place uh, is just one of my favorite places to visit. And in fact, hopefully in the next week or so, I announce my trip to Barolo. We're gonna try to do one in November. So you can have uh, Thanksgiving with your family on Thursday, maybe eat some leftovers on Friday, get on a plane on Saturday and meet me in Barolo on Sunday uh, of that Thanksgiving weekend. We'll spend a week in Barolo because that's my favorite time of the year to be there. Uh, truffle season, that's white truffles by the way. This is where the best white truffles in the world are found. And uh, great food, might get a little snow on the ground. Um, amazing hospitality. Um, did I say great food already? Because it is a great food fest. It is all about eating amazing meals. They stay in these really nice little uh, family-run hotels in the in the uh, hillsides of Barolo, and we go and visit the top producers. We will do a truffle hunt with the dogs. We'll do all kinds of fun stuff. Maybe a little cooking program, some traditional stuff just to mix it up a little bit but it's all about the wine and uh, this is a great estate to visit too because it's so classic and the Nebbiolo grapes um, these are these are uh, uh, you know, one of the clues in the glass is that this uh, does not have a lot of color in the wine uh, Nebbiolo has an incredible pH and pH tends to ward off color saturation so the colors tend to look a little bricky and a little light and a little thin, but there's nothing light or thin about a Nebbiolo wine. It's got big, massive tannins. It smells like the red soils and sands and stones that it grows in. It's just a really uh, a cool wine, and this wine's meant for you know near-term consumption, whereas a Barolo or other wines could really be a long-term hold in the cellar. But you're really tasting these these hillsides, and it's just a beautiful place to visit. So. Get out to Barolo, if not with me, on your own. Wine E is an Italian find from 2016, one of the great vintages, uh, and there's been many in Tuscany over the last decade, but 216 is the latest. In fact, the uh, Montepulciano do, uh, I'm sorry, the uh, Brunello de Montalcino, it's are starting to arrive now from 2016. Um, but this is a Rosso, um, and the difference is that uh, Brunello has to be held for five years and tends to be made from vineyards that are older and really structured, and then they take kind of the different plots of land that maybe have a higher yield or uh, produce fruit that's a little more fruit forward, a little softer, and they'll uh, pull that out, sort it out, 
and keep it away from the Brunello wine, but make a Rosso de Montalcino, which represents a beautiful option um, and quite a nice price savings. This wine's around $25, and in the world of Rosso's de Montalcino's, uh, $25 is maybe even a little on the high end. But this is a bottle of wine that was initially supposed to be $45 um, and is considered one of the great estates. This is Castiglione del Bosco, and this is one of their crew vineyards. So it's a single vineyard Rosso de Montalcino. <clears throat> Suckling gave it 93 points. And uh, quite honestly, I, I completely love the, the review. I love the wine. Uh, caramelized orange peel, dried red plums, glazed cherries. Um, definitely has a zesty, spicy, tannic notion to it. Um, maybe a little bit more voluptuous than a Chianti and not quite as extreme and as powerful as a Brunello, but 100% uh, Sangiovese and a real nice discovery. Now it is kind of tough to taste and and um, in blind situation and tell the difference sometimes between a Sangiovese and a Nebbiolo. Um, they both are, are, are spicy and, and interesting, so I'll, I'll look to see how you guys do on that. But um, these are the different regions, and we're talking about Maltolcino, um, the green region on the map. Here's a look at the uh, Castiglione di Bosco, a beautiful, huge property, 3,000 acres. It is um, not entirely planted at all. It's a lot of wildlife, uh, natural preserve, um, just a, a, an amazing spot. Definitely, it has a little, uh, what do they call them in Italy? Um, kind of a resort, small resort, agrotismo, I believe is what it's called. Um, and so they, they can have a few dozen rooms there. Um, a lot of hospitality, a lot of history. It's a UNESCO heritage site. Look at that beautiful um, a turret that's probably collapsed a little golf course you own 3,000 acres you could put a golf course on it that's a big big estate and you see these large um, barrels over here to the right these uh, these really slow down the process you probably use a mixture of both the large fooders and the smaller barrels uh, to create the wines Those are our five wines. So I'd love for you to start tasting and uh, gave the, put the answers in the, in the subject, uh, in, the, in, in the chat box. And uh, we're gonna take it one wine at a time and we'll, we'll taste wine one and start to take guesses at what, which one is wine one. Does anybody have any questions for me? Unmute you guys, so don't say anything too. Uh, so I'll ask you all to unmute if you wouldn't mind giving me a little bit of feedback. And let me know what you're smelling, what you what you can taste. Mm. Wine number one. I know wine number four. Yeah, you got number four figured out, okay. Okay. That's a little look at wine number one. It's got kind of a leanness in the color shows a little bit of um, age to it which kind of as I look across the, the mixture of vintages that could be any of the wines but this is a little bit on the lighter side in color so I think that kind of sets the tone for what it may or may not be let's smell it Lisa, where do you think that smell? What does that smell like to you? I wish I had your nose. I don't have that nose yet. Alyssa, does it, any of your group have uh, some good ideas about uh, wine number one? Hi, Ian. It's Susan. Hi, Susan. How are you? Good. What do you think of wine number one? 
It's older. Okay. With the color. Um, anybody have a guess what it is? I'm, I'm guessing because you mentioned light in the Nebbiolo because it doesn't taste like the grape. Not familiar with it. It's got a lot of tannins and structure too. And you can really smell, I think uh, if you uh, just put your nose in that glass and just think Italian food, you can really smell a lot of sp spices. Mm -hmm. You put that wine in your mouth, you can feel those tannins gripping and ripping. Nothing quite has the tannin profile of an Italian wine. However, this is not the Nebbiolo. This is the Rosso de Montepulciano. Yeah. I'm sorry, Rosso de Montalcino. I keep doing that. Um, yeah, Montalcino, Montalcino. And um, I love this wine. I really think it's uh, it's got uh, great texture. It's exactly what it's supposed to be. Yes, it's it's five years old. Um, it's in a perfect place to drink and enjoy. Um, it's a a well awarded wine. I think it tastes like you're hoping it will. I think it's got a little bit more uh, going on than uh, a, you know maybe a, a better effort from Chianti, um, <clears throat> but uh, a, a beautiful wine. Beautiful wine. I had this with a Korean barbecue recently. It was a, quite a quite a nice hit. And uh, I just think it's a really good value. Does anybody else have uh, the wine with them? It, have an opinion. And can you put the information back up on which wine it is, please? Um, I would give you. <laughs> 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 what are the okay. I'll show you the slide. How about that? For opening the bottle. <laughs> I'll show you the slide of which one this is. Let's see. It's this wine right here. If you have the bottles, you can take a wine number one out of the wrapper and take a look at it. Yeah, Sangiovese is the grape. Yeah, Sangiovese is the grape. 100% Sangiovese. Mm. Um, this is a sister of uh, Brunello de Montalcino. Um, it is, uh, you know, it doesn't have the same aging requirements, but here at uh, Del Bosco, they, they, they really have high standards. And this wine was probably released uh, about a year and a half, two years ago. Um, I'm down to my last case and a half, maybe two cases now, but I took a pretty big position on this wine because it is such a good wine at a good price and uh, we've sold quite a bit of it. So uh, I hope you enjoyed that and if uh, you want a, a couple bottles, there are about, there's about a case and a half left. All right, let's move into wine number two. I want to uh, reward the people that guessed that that was uh, wine E. Lisa, that was you. So good job on you. Good so guess. <laughs> and both uh, Sandra and Lev thought it was wine D, which I, I, I tell you, it's hard to tell the two. But uh, when you see that kind of Italian style come up again next, you'll know which one it is. All right, wine number two. So last night I went out to dinner in Orange County. I am from Orange County. I live in Los Angeles now. I have much more in common with the folks of Los Angeles than I do of Orange County. But um, man, it's so beautiful down there. We were in Laguna Beach. And I went to a, a really nice restaurant down there um, and the waitress was very kind and we told her we liked to blind taste so after we picked our food we had her bring us three glasses of wine blind uh, my partner and I shared those 
wines and we didn't know what they were but we spent some time guessing it's kind of a just fun thing to do and um, it was the first time I've eaten at a restaurant with really good service in a long time <laughs> so it was a great uh, great experience you ate outside um, there was uh, limited occupancy and we ate inside okay but uh, it was kind of like an inside outside type of an experience where the they had heaters on the patio and the patio was right next to our table but we were actually inside but uh, not a lot of masks down there in Orange County mm -mm. Mm -mm. everybody in the restaurant that works at the restaurant was wearing a mask and that was cool mm -hmm. but uh, once you get outside not a lot of masks and I'm, I'm I'm starting to get more comfortable with that idea now that I'm vaccinated but I just hope everybody is because uh, they don't want to have any problems but here is uh, wine number two hmm. that is uh, just by looking at this I hope you're not thinking that this is Nebbiolo it's got a little darkness a little bit of concentration check out that nose whenever I, I'm blind tasting the first thing I look at is color I look at that, that color and I see that and I'm thinking it's a little more youthful in color the concentration of that color kind of sets the tone for what I might start to look at for it being in the wine a thicker skin grape variety would give us that kind of color when I swirl that wine around coat the inside of the glass give my more surface area to smell I really get a lot of uh, you know kind of granite and stone notions in the nose not as much fruit so it's probably from a little cooler place picking up a lot of that smoky dried meats and spice and pepper so which tobacco. wine is it? A little tobacco? Yeah, like a like a nice cigar tobacco mm -hmm. or pipe tobacco. My grandpa smoked a pipe. Mm -hmm. And uh, I can I can get a little bit of that. Uh, Go ahead and put your guesses in the uh, in the chat box when you're ready. Between two. Is it A, B, D, or A, B, C, or D? I guess that's what those are the choices we have left now. A, B, C, or D. Setsuko is playing along from Japan, and she doesn't have the wine, so she's doing a good job paying attention. getting just a little bit more heft and power than um, I even expected when I described this wine so I think I misled you just a little bit because I'm now in comparison to other wines this thing's got some really good color and concentration <coughs> and Sasuko I think you made a good estimate based on the information I provided but this wine is actually wine A. All of this wine tasting is paying off. All right. Moss Grand Plagnol um, from Castaires de Nimes. Mocha, chocolatey, good black pepper. Mm. I mean, that richness and that concentration is just pretty magnificent for $14 a bottle. It's just an outstanding value. And um, I, I think it's delicious. I could have this with so many different types of food, 
barbecue and different proteins from red flesh fish to to grilled lamb chops um, I would I would highly recommend this wine for a daily it's a really good daily deal all right that's two down three to go we've got uh, the possibility of a Malbec a Nebbiolo or a, a wine from the Languedoc and uh, excited to see what you guys think so wine three I'm uh, looking at Ron Tassoff's table you've got uh, six of you beautiful dining room there guys that is that your daughter's house yes we are it's my birthday <laughs> all right happy birthday, yeah, happy birthday. Thank you. fantastic that right holding <laughs> awesome congratulations it's my surprise party <laughs> Well, let's let's uh, plant a guess at wine number three. There it is for those playing along. Uh, we've got uh, something with some pretty good uh, color. Let me describe the nose. Mm. And that makes my mouth water. And uh, it's got this really nice, like, mocha. Uh, I think there's a good balance between the fruit and the earth here. I think it's hard to tell if it's old world or new world. Yeah. We've got a French, a Malbec, and it's got a lot of tannins. It does have a good amount of tannin. And I would say, you know, knowing what we, there's two ways to do this tasting. If you know what we have to pick from, uh, that's one way. Uh, when you're t testing or tasting, taking a test for say your SOM exam or master for wine, you don't have any idea what the wines could be. When I taste this wine and I smell it and I don't know what it could be, I, I'll just tell you what I, I see and smell in the glass. This really reminds me of Bordeaux. It smells like uh, right bank Bordeaux. It's got a, kind of a heavy clay, wet clay kind of nose, mulchy earth. Say that word now. Mm. And uh, a little kind of a fun little element of funkiness that you might get from like Cab Franc, Merlot uh, type of wines. And uh, so if you want to use that information to deduce your answer, that might help you a little bit if you make the connection. So did you make your guesses? Yeah. Definitely <laughs> Which one, Susan? The French. I don't remember if it was in a Bordeaux, the other French. Well, we do have a French possibility from Menevois, but it is not Menevois. This, the French connection is Petit Fleur, the Malbec, because this is hey. made by Bordeaux, Bordeaux producers that are making wine in uh, Mendoza, this is insane cool stuff. It smells like uh, 2012 Right Bank Bordeaux. And uh, it has been a couple of years since I've uh, tasted this wine, um, but I had always loved it. And it was, in fact, I placed it in a restaurant that I consulted with many years ago for By the Glass. And uh, I'm not so sure that this isn't the same lot that I was b pulling from back then, but uh, uh, saw it in inventory and I asked about it. And when distributors are carrying older inventory, they tend to let things go at 
a low price and I got a deal in a, of the century on this um, and it it smells just like Bordeaux uh, let's see <clears throat> Yeah. 1895. Still got great um, persistence of tannin. I do think at some point in in this in the life of this wine, those tannins will probably become too prominent because the fruit will continue to soften. But if you're going to drink this wine over the next year or two, you've got nothing to worry about. This is an absolute, um, you know, under $20, this is a home run. And I, I'd love for you to take this out in a brown bag and and uh, stump your friends that like Bordeaux with this this wine. Just remember that French connection because this is Michel Roland, who is a, a very important uh, Bordeaux consultant. This is a winemaker from Bordeaux that helped make this wine. And uh, really a, a great, great little find. So this guy owns multiple little chateaus in Bordeaux and he makes this with uh, Michelle Roland. All right, wine four. So now it's between could be a Nebbiolo or it could be the Minervois. So this color. can see uh, into the glass. Mm, not a good look yet. There it is. There it is. It's got a little bit of a, a leanness in the color. And also notice that kind of advancement in age, a little bit of oxidation, oxidative. It's got kind of a rusty color. That smells like dried meats. It smells like spices and herbs. Give it a minute, just keep swirling it. It keeps getting better. It keeps smelling like they, the quintessential elements of this wine are the tar and rose elements that you can pick. Imagine walking into a refrigerator full of roses and you get that fresh rose petal smell. Go into the glass looking for that. And then imagine just you're driving down the road and they're paving the, 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 the road with tar and uh, you get that kind of an element too. This is, a, this is a really beautiful, but slightly rustic traditional wine of Italy. Um, this is the Mir Mirafore. Wine D. Sandra? Do you want to say something, Sandra? You're welcome to. I, I know you're there and you're answering the questions. Hi, all the wines are really good. Good. <laughs> they better be. I, I really <laughs> love these wines. And, um, you know, it's hard to find wines that, uh, you know, if you're going to spend a lot of money, you can find something great easy, right? True. But, you know, sub 20 bucks a bottle is kind of where a lot of people, you know, I, I, I personally have a hard time finding anything too low in the price point that keeps me coming back for more. But when you can get close to 20 bucks and you can find stuff that has like some sort of a special price on it um, with a good story, there's real value there. And so I really love all four, all four of what we've had so far. We got one more. I want to hear what you think of wine number five. So last night, when I was in Orange County, I did my first public tasting 
her family that's been with me for about 20 years. And they had me come down. They did a, a, a post-vaccination party at their house in Orange County. And they have this great view of the ocean. And I opened up a, a bunch of wines. We just kind of did a little cheese and charcuterie night. And I worked with a company out of Los Angeles called Lady and Larder. And they made this beautiful charcuterie board for the 20 people in the family. And I brought down a bunch of wines and we paired the cheeses and the meats. And I used that Mirafore last night with this, they did this, uh, there's this uh, Bronzola, I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, that's a Wagyu. Uh, it's a, a piece of charcuterie made from Wagyu in the Italian tradition of Brazola. It's like dried mm. steak, basically. But yeah. it's this Wagyu steak, and it had this like caramelization to it. And you put that in your mouth with that that Nebbiolo wine. I, I was a hero last night doing that pairing. People were freaking out how good that was. So we now will move into wine five. <laughs> I have learned something over this year. I got a hundred percent, Ian. All right, you nailed it. Good job, Lisa. So wine five, we already know what the answer is. This is our Minervois. Um, so take a, take a nice big drag on the nose of this wine. You can really smell what I was describing, kind of that Mediterranean ocean air. <laughs> Here's our answer. Uh, B is our wine five. Um, and this is Chateau Maris. This is uh, right off the coast. They can literally see the ocean from the property in Minervois, straight down the hill. Really old soils, just completely stony, ocean air, salt in the air, salinity. So you get that kind of saltiness in the nose. And then that rockiness. This is the more uh, of the the two wines that we had from uh, Southern France tonight. We had the uh, uh, Planiole and this wine. The Planiole had lots of fruit and chocolatey and mocha. And this plays the other side of the French equation, really terroir driven um, stoniness and minerality. They're both great. They're both great, um, and each one of them probably would have a different set of fans tonight. <clears throat> but this is just such a really cool estate. This is like a leader in. Uh, there's there's probably zero sulfur in this wine, by the way, too. Um, Maris does everything so. It says made from organic grapes. It is. Uh, he does so many things uh, on the back. It's certified, uh, agricole, bio, um, and he uses n almost no protection on the wines. I have a 2011 white wine on my website that I'm probably gonna drink all myself because nobody's buying uh, 2011 whites, <laughs> but uh, it is so freaking good. It's a it's a a, a, um, a Pinot Gris, uh, Grenache Gris. I'm sorry, Grenache Gris, 2011, and no protection. And so this wine is getting amazing age, character, and stony minerality, but has also got this incredible concentration and richness. And it's really just an awesome bottle of wine to take out for dinner with friends and to shock the hell out of them that they're drinking a 2011 it doesn't look old at all and that's this this guy's message he's like if you know how to do this you can do it well and you can make wines that don't require a lot of chemicals and additives and preservatives and he is part of a movement in wine that's pretty fanatical and this guy's really out there and he really really believes it you look at him in the eyes and this guy is just in love with his craft. I would encourage you all to look for Chateau Maris and try something, anything from them. They're all really profound wines. And because he's from the south of France, these don't carry big price point, price numbers. 
Um, I carry a couple. Um, he makes like 30 wines. I, 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 my rule on my website is to usually carry only one or two from uh, any one brand. Um, I think I have three from them. I have a rosé. I have the white from 2011. And I have uh, this, this uh, little treasure too. Um, but they're all very affordable and very practical, very, um, you know, homeopathic is the way he considers his vineyard practices. I hope you've enjoyed our blind tasting. We do a lot of different fun things and I have just a couple of things to show you about some stuff on our website um, and a few developments. First thing I'm going to show you is uh, Merchant of Wine. Hide sidebar, there we go. So Merchant of Wine, um, I can't believe it, but uh, we are heading into June and that means one year I've been doing Zooms. Uh, we were a live event business that were paralyzed in March and April of last year and uh, Zoom became a reality and we started zooming so we created zoom into wine which takes you to this page our tasting calendar is what we call it now and we've just redeveloped the page to show all the different things that we're doing so we have now classes that are presented by learn about wine and uh, the zooms which are by merchant of wine and coming up very quickly here uh, Wednesday night we're with Vegas Cecilia one of the greatest wineries in the world. And uh, you get a couple of really special wines, 95, 97 point wines that we're gonna be doling out. You can join us for just $65 to get you the tasting kit. The bottle set is um, what the bottles cost, which is around 350 to 400 bucks if you get both bottles. And, uh, or you can just watch uh, the Zoom for free on Facebook or, or join us as a member. Um, next weekend, we have this extreme lineup of crazy high-scoring Napa cabs, including the 100-point Malbec, uh, I'm sorry, Maybach wine. Maybach, this, uh, a wine called Cervantes, and a wine from Realm. All of these got over 96 points, and they are extreme in their category and collectible. Uh, the Realms around 150 bucks, the uh, Cervantes around 150 bucks, and the uh, Maybach is around $350. And we're going to taste them blind as well and see if you can't find which one's the 100 pointer. Um, but really fun, and for 65 bucks, it's a great value to be able to taste all three of those babies. The week after, uh, we're um, offering a, a larger pour of cake bread. If you join us for the cake bread seminar, we're only going to use one wine and get a um, double pour uh, for the $50 price point, or you can purchase the full bottle. And we'll have the winemaker from cake bread on the Zoom. Uh, and by the way, this is my favorite cake bread wine I've tasted in the past five years. I, I find a lot of their wines very good. This is an awesome Napa Cab 2017. Um, it's all bench fruit. It's their higher tier in Cabernet and a really, really special 2017 wine, which I love. So uh, we're gonna enjoy that. We're gonna do a little German Riesling kind of uh, mm -hmm. tutorage. We're gonna go all over the, Ries the land of Riesling from Trocken to uh, Cabernet, Spätlis, uh, and we'll even throw in a, a Grosskavest Gross Gavex, which is uh, uh, otherwise known as GG. Um, the great wines of uh, Germany now have these vineyard designations, and Gross Gavex wines are some of the greatest values in the wine world, uh, only costing about $100 a bottle, and they will blow your mind how good they are. They'll age forever, and a lot of collectors are starting to pick up on these Gross Gavex wines. So I'm picking up a few of them because um, I love them. And if I can't sell them, that's what I want to own. So uh, that's this is a real exciting night. 
of the best in German Riesling. How about a little sake session? I will confess, I know literally nothing about sake. So I'm, go I'm, I'm going out and I'm bringing in a master. This guy right here, Eduardo Dingler. This guy's on the Psalm Network on TV. He is a sake guru and he's going to teach us about sake and we're going to use three profound sake to do that with. Uh, this one in front, um, kind of like what you would expect from a really good small producer. He'll talk about the, 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 the different origins and the different water qualities, the different rice textures. He'll give us a little bit of insight on that. And then we'll go to this super high-end special single little plot. And then this black bottle here. And we'll get behind all three of these really interesting sakis and uh, learn from uh, one of the great uh, sake experts in the world. So that's going to be really fun. And I hope you guys will join us because that also carries a very light price point uh, for an experience of that quality and to have an expert like that. So I hope you guys will join us. We also have our rosé event coming up. And by the way, we just added two more rosés. So if you join us, we'll be talking about 14 rosés. Right now you can go onto the website and for 200 bucks, you get a bottle of all 14 rosés. That, uh, that price point is insane because I think the total cost of all 14 bottles is about $350. So you get a really awesome lineup. You can curve in those bottles and spread them out over a month or two's time um, and have a lot of fun. We're gonna taste some awesome rosé from all over the world with different experts there from each and every winery. And so we'll have seven wines in about 65 minutes with uh, uh, the different producers talking about each of their wines. So join us for Stars of Rosé. There's two dates, it's on the calendar, and I'm excited to see you there. Have a good night, everybody. If you're on this Zoom, we already sent out the email with the Zoom link here. Also contained a special link to the website to give you special pricing. And um, you'll be able to use the website to find any of the wines tonight if you liked them i have a couple cases of each some of them are past you know i'm not able to reorder um the 2012 malbec uh even the languedoc wine from myra maris and the miraflore i have what i have um the 2016 rosso de Montalcino. um i have what i have those are all i i, I bought a lot of them and I bought a lot of them for a reason um, and uh, took everything that they had. So I have some to sell and I'll have it for a little while unless anybody gobbles it up. But um, um, the, the, these wines are really, really uh, delicious, good values. And I hope you guys will enjoy them for the months ahead. And I thank you for supporting us tonight and hope to see you all very, very soon. Have a good night, everybody. Thanks, Bye. Ian. Hope you have a great weekend. Enjoy this beautiful weather. We're at 60 degrees in Los Angeles, which is a treat as we're heading into the hot season. So uh, um, be, be good and uh, have a good night.